Welcome to flipping $400 into a Ferrari where I initially took a $400 investment, bought a car, fixed a car, cleaned a car, sold a car, until I now have $67,000. And you're with me at the auction today to see what we could come up with with $67,000. Now I have to tell you right off the bat, it's not as easy as it sounds. Now do I buy cheap cars? Do I buy expensive cars? Do I just save like all the money that I don't spend and spend like 20,000 or do I spend the whole 67,000? I have no idea. Well today I'm at a dealer auction and you're coming with me. There are Porsches, there are classic cars, there are new cars, there are old cars. I have no idea what I'm coming home with and you're gonna see everything firsthand just like I am. We're gonna find out what we can buy for $67,000 or less. I have no idea and you're gonna find out with me. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. So can you believe we started with $400 and now have 67,000? Now it has taken quite some time. I mean, I've been doing this for well over a year. I've watched shows and YouTubers that have started with a paperclip and traded to a Tesla in one episode. That's not realistic. They used their connections. They, they cheated the system. This is as real as it's going to get because I'm doing it very, very part time. We're at like one car a month because I'm a business owner. I have multiple things going on. I have family. So this Ferrari flip series has been very very slow motion because it's reality, which is kind of what this channel is. There's no fluff, there's no fakeness to it. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose, sometimes it's part time, sometimes I have more free time to get motivated and do better. Sometimes I make a lot of money, sometimes I don't make a lot of money, and that's why we're at $67,000 right now. Well today, we're gonna see what we can come up with. Are we gonna buy something cheap? Are we gonna buy something expensive? Let's check out these two cars before I even jump into that. Now this is a 1990 Porsche Carrera 4. The values are up on these a lot now uh, since COVID happened these things have come up tremendously now in the inside it looks like an old Porsche 944 even though it's a Carrera 4 obviously there's a big difference in engine there's a big difference in drivability this is a mid-engine mid versus the 944 is a front engine so I mean it's apples and oranges but the interior looks the same that's what I'm getting at now this right here is a 1939 Mercury the first year of Mercury like real the whole company first year 1939 this is a pre-war car meaning pre-World War II car. It is a convertible. It is a four-seater. This is a folding manual top. This is kind of neat. This is how it starts. So you put your key in right here and it had pushed to start in the late 30s, which is kind of neat. This is the radio. This is the heater block, glove box with the clock inside. And what else is neat is you had ashtrays for both passenger and driver. That's really, really cool. Now there's some other neat features about this car. You'll see the choke button right here, the throttle button right here. It is a two-speed on the floor with overdrive. So even though it's two gears, you can put an overdrive on the highway and you'll have like essentially kind of a third gear, but not really. This is a flathead Ford V8. Now the tough thing about this, hang on, let's hit the horn. That's awesome. That is a real car's horn. The tough thing about this car is what is it worth? Like the collectors of these cars have mostly passed on, which is probably why this car was here. I bet the previous owner passed away and then, you know, the family sold it off or traded in for something new, which is really sad. But what is the value on these? I, I have no idea. Is it worth 15? Is it worth 20? Is it worth 50? I mean, at 15, I would love to have this car. Anything above that would be kind of too much for me. I love the teardrop headlights, Ford V8 Club, early Ford V8 Club. This is how you open the hood right here. So you pull it here and you can open it there. That is a neat car. Wow, what is this? Like a 64 GMC that is mint. Look at that bed. Wow, look at this paint. This is my favorite part, solid wood bumper. That's really well done. This is a cool truck. Wow, a lot of neat stuff at the auction today. Now, it's just, if I remember correctly, my son watches, he used to watch a movie called Monster Trucks, where like an alien took over monster truck and I feel like this is the truck he drove maybe that was a Dodge I don't remember but similar hey on a completely separate note I want to clarify last week I was at the auction with $67,000 I bought a Jeep Wrangler for 7,000 so I actually only have $60,000 to spend today so we're gonna try to spend 60,000 but like I had said previously like it's not easy to spend $60,000 especially for me because I'm used to buying cars like sub 30,000 so it's for somebody that does that has never really come from money I didn't have money growing up so everything is budget friendly I'm like very fiscally conservative it's hard for me to just drop money all the time especially sixty thousand dollars plus there are no Ferraris here so today's video I can tell you there is not going to be a Ferrari there are new Camaros there's a Maserati over there the Maserati I think has frame damage though but that would be kind of a neat car I think it's worth I already looked at it once I think it's worth around 20 like it's a twenty five thousand dollar car but it's worth around 20 taking into consideration the fact that it was in an accident has you 
unibody damage or frame damage. So that would be kind of a cool car for our first series. Here's the Camaro LT1. I'd love to hear in the comments what makes an LT1. I know that used to be the cast iron block in like 97 and earlier Camaros, but what is an LT1 package now? This is a 66,000 mile Maserati. To be honest with you, these don't really impress me much aside from the engine. The engine's incredible. And like they wrap the hood, which is concerning. Why is the hood wrapped? Is it just for looks or is it because it needed to be wrapped? This is a scary car. I could get into a can of worms right here with this thing. There was a 72 GMC Jimmy, no roof, perfect, perfect car. There's a Cadillac around here too, like a 60 something Cadillac convertible. I don't know what I should be buying in this price range anymore. I mean, when I was in cheap money, it was easy. I just buy what I know, it was simple. But now that I'm in big money, I don't know what I should be buying. Like the Bentley was an easy one. The Aston Martin was an easy one because it was fun and I enjoyed it and made good content with it. But like, do I go buy a, a new Duramax? Do I go buy like a new Toyota Tacoma? I have no idea what we should be buying now in the 60,000 plus price range. This is what I have in mind but like a really cheap version of this beautiful vehicle look at these wheels and tires and frame and suspension this 72 jimmy is unbelievable i mean it's this is what I wanted. Wow, it is so clean. Now this one does not come with a roof. So it's just like my Escalade. It will get soaked if it rains. Now this is a show car. It is a one-off perfect restoration. The thing is, this car is $70,000. I don't have $70,000 to spend on a toy that's gonna sit out in the elements. So I wanted to make one on the real, real cheap. Even though this would be incredible to have. Speaking of which, he has a widow TRD Pro oh, with this widow wolf whack. This is a 22 TRD with 546 miles. Like, should I be buying these things for like 50 grand and trying to sell them or not? I don't even know. Last week there was a Saturn Sky Red Line that is right here still, so we could buy that. That's like gonna be under 10 grand. So again, we're not even in the $60,000 price range. Right there might work though. 2021 Saline, 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 Saline. I think it's like gasoline, Saline. 21 Saline. Mustang, 3,600 miles. It is not locked. Awesome. Pretty cool. I mean, these Mustangs don't really do it for me. Just like the Camaros, everything kind of seems a little cheapy. Let's see what's under the hood on this. Is this, are these supercharged? Are they not supercharged? I know they're numbered cars. It is a numbered car, 302 white label. This would be pretty neat. It is a naturally aspirated five liter. I don't know what they do to the engine to make these more powerful. I'm assuming they do something. I would love to hear in the comments because I haven't researched this at all. That is a beautiful car. Okay, I want to show you something because this truck has been here for a couple of weeks. This is a 2020 Trail Boss with 22,000 miles. This is ugly and this right here is what makes this truck look old and not like a 2020 so i think just physically you look at it and your brain says oh this truck is beat or this is old or it's just not in good shape i would buy this truck and remove this in a heartbeat oh, maybe i could put it on my escalade whoa that would be awesome i could buy this thing at a discount because of that rack remove it and then sell it for profit i like this whoa check that out pontiac grand prix winston cup pace car with 11,000 miles. See the pace car lights? Pace car lights here. Pace car lights here. Wow, that is cool. It is a little aged though. This isn't like a mint condition car, even though it has 11,000 miles. That is neat. Pontiac is kind of faded. This is kind of cracked too. Alfa Romeo Spider 86. Oh, that is cool. And I was actually the high bidder on this two weeks in a row. The convertible roof doesn't work, which is why it's still here, which is why it is here, which is why I'm not bidding on it this week. Ah, uh, GM, come on, listen to that. Knock, 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 knock. Now this right here is the car of the day. Comment what it is before I even show it to you. Most of you aficionados should be able to figure it out right from that fin right there. This is a 1960 Cadillac convertible DeVille. Is that what it's called? I think 78,000 miles. Now I spoke to the owner the or the seller rather the previous owner was a cadillac collector and passed away this thing is amazing this is like such a family car to take for ice cream and shows and things wow this is so sweet looking this is the car of the day and this would be my choice the only thing is once again who do i sell it to who is interested in these how do i market it how do i figure out a price on it i've gone on ebay to look for like sold ones or listed ones and there's one for 25 there's one for 124,000, and then there's nothing else so i don't even know how to price this thing i am really feeling a tesla though i mean teslas were in like this fuel crisis 
analytical thing. I think having a Tesla would be kind of neat. Learning about it, I don't know much about Teslas. I've never owned a Tesla. I think it'd be cool to incorporate a Tesla into this Ferrari Flip Series. I mean, we've never even had an EV in our Ferrari Flip Series. They did have the Porsche Taycan, which was amazing, but that had nothing to do with the Ferrari Flip. All right, let's go to the auction. I hope we can come home with something, something awesome. I don't know, we're gonna find out, and you're gonna find out with me. See you on the flip side. Something about this Alfa Romeo that's pulling me to it. It'll be a cheap car. I mean, we'll still have a surplus of money left, but it's still kind of fun. This would be neat, neat to have in the collection and learn about. What about a giant lifted diesel, Cecil? This would be kind of neat. Haven't had any lifted trucks in the collection yet. Giant tires. I have the Alfa Romeo running this side and a lifted diesel running two lanes over, so I get to juggle back and forth between the two. This is why Pope Al is good to have around. It's one of the many reasons. I'd like to go up to 6,500 on this truck for me. Okay? Thank you. 3,500, thank you. Alfa Romeo's got to be 30, right? 3,700. 38, 38, 39, 39. I have no idea. I think I'm gonna bid on that part. I don't even know what that thing's worth. Hey! Hey! I think that might be all the money. I bid her at 39. That's all the money. Can I get it? I got the Alfa Romeo. I feel like that was an $1,800 car. There we go. I completely guessed on the value of that. I might have overpaid. Let's see how my grandfather had done on the diesel. How'd you do? 67 Did you get it? For 200 You always have $200 in leeway, okay? You can always go 200 more. Oh well, I got one at least. Uh, I was going to go to the 67, then I said that. Whatever permission I give you, you always have a $200 buffer. Alright, let's get the heck out of here. Auction's over. Pop, I only took one home, so that's all we're getting. Yeah. The 39 Merc, 25,000 of the high bid. They wanted like near 40. I don't even know what that car's worth. I don't know how to put a number on it. I don't know who to sell it to. The 911, the 1999-11, did all the money to, and I looked up the values, and it was like five grand over what the most recent has sold. The GMC Jimmy was 70 grand, which is probably worth it because I don't think you could build that truck for what it was, but I don't need that. Oh, the Cadillac? That, that convertible, yeah. uh, they wanted 50 for it, I think. And that's just, seems like a lot of money to me. I don't, yeah. I don't even know. I don't know how to put a number on that. I ended up spending $4,140 of my $60,000 today on 1986 Alfa Romeo Spider. Now it comes with two tops. The seller actually came up to me after I bought it and said that the uh, the guy he's selling it for is like halfway through a restoration. So apparently there's two tops for it. There's like a new carpet in the trunk. The dash is right there. So there's like extra parts and pieces. I honestly think $4,140 is a lot of money for this car, but I really have no clue. Like, I, I just don't know the market on these things and old cars. I know trucks, I know diesels, I know Jeeps, I know Suburbans, I know Mustangs, I know Camaros, I know Corvettes. I don't know special interest. How the heck do we open this thing? There's gonna be a lot to learn about this little Italian sports car. Check out that exhaust center exhaust right there. Wanna open the hood for me? Yeah, for male four cylinder, there we go. And quadrifolio, four folding something. I don't know what that means. Body by Pininfarina, designed Ferraris, designed Cadillacs, very big in the 80s. I don't know if it's gonna even start, let's find out. Do you wanna drive? Do you want me to drive? You can drive. I do the honors? All right. Gonna learn about this car a little bit. All right, let's see here. Fuel injected, no need to pump. Ah, she fires right up. Here, how do you open it? There we go. Runs like hell. Ready? It's good. No power steering. I can picture myself driving through the hills of Capri and this buzzing around. Oh my goodness, no power steering. This is rough. Fuel injection, but no power steering, unless there's something wrong. Wanna go out for lunch in it? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, she's quick. All right, let's go get some grub. A couple cool things about this car I just learned already. Window switches, right here. Does your power window switch work? Yeah. yeah. Our window works. It's kind of neat. Just the mirror. Oh, freak. Come on. Oh, there we go. All right, let's rip it up. Here's the Jimmy right there. That was the body of the day. Oh, there he goes. I'm not even gonna see it. 
out of all the cars, that Catalytic convertible and the Mercury were probably my two favorites. Yeah. That uh, Mercury was pretty neat to see, like a piece of history. So too, this wooden shift knob is a Momo shift knob. That's kind of cool. Hey, I think I also found the trunk release, just kind of dangling. I don't know if that's gonna do anything. That? Oh, on that side. Oh, I see. It opened. All right, let's see. Hey, we got another okay. steering wheel. Owner's manual, gaskets, Ooh. records, carpets, score, CD changer. All right, we can put this thing back together. That'll make a great video in itself. Awesome. Dynamat on the... Need the battery. Soundproofing, why'd they do that? All right, this might be okay. You know, walking away from it, it is kind of a cool looking car from here. Maybe we did all right. For four grand, whatever. I mean, I'm not gonna lose my shirt on. It's not like I spent 60 and found out I had a bad transmission or something, or I can't sell it. That is the market I like. I love buying cars under like 10 grand that they're affordable to everybody. That's what started this whole business. That's what started this channel. Affordable cars that you can afford, that I can afford, that nobody's gonna lose their shirt on if something goes wrong. All right, so to buy cars the way I buy them, to show you everything that I saw today that I showed you guys, you need a dealer's license. You can't get in there if you don't have a dealer's license, so that's been a perk for mine to be able to buy these things at a lower price. If you ever wanted to start your own car dealership, it's a lot of work, like getting your wholesale license, or your auction license, or your dealer's retail license, all that stuff. A lot of hoops to jump through and it's more than just Googling it. Like there are lots of things that took me 20 years to learn. If you ever want to learn how to do that, you can go to www.startyourdealership.com to learn how to do what I do, how to get to where I got and like fast forward through all the mishaps, all the mistakes that I've made are, are there so you don't make them as well. If you don't want your dealer's license, you just want to learn how to flip cars for profit like without a license but do it legally, carflipping101.com. Both the links are right down below. Well, that's all she wrote for today. The Alfa Romeo is all loaded up. We're gonna take her back to the shop. We're gonna go through it this week, see if we can kind of bring it back to life a little bit and try to sell it. So I had 67,000. I spent seven on a Jeep Wrangler and I spent four on this. So that's 11. So I have about, what, $49,000 left. And I have an Alfa Romeo and a Jeep Wrangler. So that's kind of neat. I would have liked to leave today with something a lot cooler than this, but I mean, this is an affordable car for everybody that's watching. So we're gonna learn a little bit about an Alfa Romeo in our next video and hopefully make some money, turning it for some profit. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys all later. Have a great day. Adios.